Hi everyone, it's Chris at saltwaterwitch.com. See my astro images and gear posts over there on my blog. I'm also back on Astrobin after a couple of years. Uh, the link is also on my blog, go check that out. Uh, so this is a quick video on my first night out with a new hydrogen alpha filter, the three nanometer HA Pro filter from Antlia. Antlia? I'm, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Antlia, A-N-T-L-I-A. You may have seen this in stores or they have a they have uh, a whole range of narrow band and LRGB filters out there now. And they're relatively, well, they're actually very inexpensive. They're about half the price of the Astrodons and Chromas, which are clearly, those are the, the, the high end filters out there. So narrow band imaging is all about the filters you use to block out every bit of light, except for one narrow section of the electromagnetic spectrum. The photons landing at your telescope's front door with the correct wavelength, say around 656 nanometers for hydrogen alpha, are allowed to pass. Everyone else is kicked out. And sometimes with narrow band imaging, you just want to go narrower. Over the last 10 years of astronomy and astrophotography, I have used a bunch of different filters. I've used 12 nanometer, seven nanometer, six nanometer, and five nanometer hyd hydrogen alpha filters. And these numbers represent the gap in the filter, allowing light of the specific, of a specific range of wavelengths through. So I bought the Antlia three nanometer narrowband H alpha pro filter about a month ago, but haven't had a chance to test it out until now, mostly due to poor weather. The Antlia 3 nanometer HA is is only like 270 bucks USD. You can compare this price with the high end filters, Chroma and Astrodon at 575, 564 each. So on Wednesday, uh, this last this past Wednesday, a few days ago, was my first night out in the in the filter wheel, along with my astronomic uh, six nanometer HA, O3, and S2 filters. At some point, I may do a side-by-side -side comparison with the Astronomic 6 nanometer, which I, I really do like. It's a, that was actually not a very expensive filter either, but uh, has performed well. And I, I'm already working out different strategies for using both, and de you know, depending on target. So I already assumed I would double the exposure times or number of exposures going from three nanometer or six nanometer to three. And I went with a little of both in my first test. Uh, doing 67, actually I think it ended up being like 70 or something, but I ended up stacking 67 300 second subs for the Rosette Nebula, which is, you know, the Rosette is bright. So I, I was expecting to see quite a bit and uh, I thought it was a good test. So one noticeable difference during capture was, to me it seemed lower contrast in the individual subs or the appearance of lower contrast because I I think there's now hydrogen data where I was expecting empty space. And this gives the entire frame sort of a brighter, more uniform appearance. I was expecting more HA data. I mean, that's the reason to go narrower, to cut out everything except hydrogen alpha. Looking at you, nitrogen too. So I was a little worried watching five minute exposures appear in ECOS that seemed flatter with less detail. But after capturing 70 and stacking 67, the result was better than I expected. The other difference I hadn't uh, anticipated or even thought about is longer autofocus times because I've bumped up the exposure time from 30 seconds at, uh, at one, one by one binning. You know, for the, for the ZWO uh, electronic, the EAF I have on the, on the Space Cat, which is what I, was, what I was using for my test, I went with linear SEP in ECOS, and that t it took about, um, I didn't actually count, I didn't actually have a stopwatch, but it took about four to five minutes for the full autofocus process. Most of that in exposure time, because I'm running 30 second exposures. I usually see about two with other narrow band filters and something like a minute with, a, with the clear filter, taking you know one to four second exposures with the clear. The astronomic filters are close to par focal. But the Antlia, Antlia is pretty far off to the point where I will probably use a starting offset for the HA 3 nanometer when jumping between different filters. And I don't do that now, but uh, I will have to because it's, it's, it's that, there's, there's that big a, a difference. Okay, so longer exposure times and focusing routine. What about the imaging? Well, I'm impressed. Unfortunately, I don't have experience with other 3 nanometer HA filters, but I can tell you there is a noticeable difference between the three nanometer and my five and six nanometer. And I like what I'm seeing, you know, like any new tool or process, it takes some getting used to, but I think once you're there, this uh, Antlia three nanometer HA filter seems to work well. It does exactly what it's designed to do. And so far after just three nights of imaging, it seems well worth the price. Um, I'm really happy with the results so far. 
So that's all for now. Check out Saltwater Witch for my Astro stuff. Clear skies, everyone.